started. Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to our fifth and final episode in our Purpose Life series. I am Kimberly Morgan, and I will be your host for tonight. And I do believe that we're in for something awesome, something tremendous, something great. Well, but before I proceed, I would just love to extend a warm and hearty welcome to all of our viewers tonight on Facebook and YouTube. We also like to extend a warm welcome to my ID Pioneers family. And if it is that you're in the house tonight, if it is that you're joining with me on this virtual platform, go ahead and type in the chat, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so without further ado, I would like to just stand back for a moment and just to ask you. So I'm here with you present in this moment and I'm tuning in all the way from Ontario, Canada. And I would love for you to go ahead and type in the chat and let me know where in Jamaica that you're tuning in from or what country. It could be Australia. It could be China. So go ahead and let me know where it is that you're tuning in from tonight. So I'm actually seeing Abigail Smith from Mandeville, cool, cool Mandeville, and also Renika McLean from Clarendon. Welcome, guys. It's good to have you. It's good to have you tonight. Welcome, 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 everyone. So thank you again for joining us on this leg of our journey. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it, and we could not have done it without you. So before I continue... I'm sure you want to know who we are, right? So who is ID Pioneers? Who we are? What do we do? I'm sure you have all those questions in your mind. So we are a movement of purpose-driven individuals who are, you know, we are passionate, you know. We are pioneering pathways to purpose for youths all across Jamaica. And what is our vision? What is our vision, guys? Our vision is to see every youth in Jamaica and beyond live powerfully in purpose and powerfully in influencing their world. Right, guys? So our vision is to see every youth in Jamaica and beyond living victoriously in purpose and powerfully influencing their world. So what do we do, guys? We do purpose workshops and camps. We do career and life purpose coaching, youth worker training and conferencing, conferences, purpose-driven workshops, and of course, we offer scholarships and grants. And where do we do it? As a team of ID pioneers, volunteers, facilitators, we basically seek to influence all of our youths in whether it is be the state homes, whether it be in juvenile correctional facilities, whether it be the churches and schools, our community clubs and social agencies, and of course, our street leaders. We are indeed making our mark. As our topic says tonight, we are making our mark, and that is what we as ID pioneers, that is our mandate. We are, we are taking it by force, and we are leaving a legacy and making our mark in Jamaica and also globally. So basically tonight, you know, one of our core values as well as we as you know, ID Pioneers, we have a culture where we basically love to, to just give back. You know, generosity is at our core. And tonight we want to give back three prizes tonight. So if it is that you are ready, we have amazing prizes in store for you tonight. And if it is that you want to participate and grab all of these prizes tonight, I want to type in the chat and say, I will be one of them. Go ahead and type in the chat and say, that you are a winner tonight. I am a winner. Are you a winner tonight? So I'm going to call out our early. Actually pays to be early. So our early bird winner for tonight is no other person than. I'm waiting on that name. Our early bird person tonight will be.
we have Marcio Wilson. Congrats, Marcio. And Marcia is tuning in with us on Facebook. So go ahead, guys. Let her feel welcome. Congratulate her. Congrats, Marcio. We are so happy that you're partaking tonight and you are a winner. So before I continue, I just want to remind you of our Purpose Life 2021 series or theme that says, history in the making, which is also his story, God's story in the making. And I just want you to all know that we are co-creators and we are characters and we are all playing a part in a bigger story, which has been written and produced in partner partnership with our creator. You know, and by intentionally doing this, by purposefully doing this, we leave an in indelible mark in history. No, guys, the early bird winner, that person, I know that I've already said it's Marcia, but that person will win, will walk away with a seven day unlimited data and talk from your network provider. Again, congrats, Marcia. So our topic for tonight is make your mark. And to be honest, 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 I am so anticipating so much to hear what the speakers has in store for us tonight. And we have two power pack, two powerful, two awesome speakers who are ready to unpack, who are ready to dissect what it means to just for us as young people to make our mark in this era. We have with us tonight, we have Crystal Day and D.I. Razi. You know, awesome, awesome, awesome people. Awesome people who are blazing trails and they are making their mark in this generation. But before I continue, we just want to set the pace. We know that the enemy has been trying with so many things, but we know we're going to put God first. So let us just pray. Father, we just want to thank you tonight. Father, we welcome you on this very platform, Lord, and we ask you that you just rule, that you just reign. Father, we ask you, Holy Spirit, mighty God, that this very proceedings, Lord God, that you just be in the midst of it, Lord God, and I pray that it will be a blessing. Father, let every word that go forth, Lord God, it will resonate into the heart, into the soul, into the mind of every viewer tonight. Wherever ever you are tonight, Lord God, you know their position, you know their situation, Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you just minister unto them, Lord, that tonight will be a radical shift in your life, that tonight there will be transformation, that they will know that they are a chosen generation, Lord, and that they will get up, mighty God, and start being, start doing, start walking into their royal identity and make a mark in their different circles. Lord, we just want to thank you for our speakers, for them to just avail themselves to pour out into the lives of your people. Let us all just give God praise and to just tell him thanks for the awesome work he's about to do. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen and amen. Welcome again, guys. And before I continue, before I continue, we have an awesome, awesome young lady. You know, I'm so honored to introduce this person to you. And she is no other than Crystal Day. But I'm going to just share with you a little about, you know, who this person is. So Crystal Day is a dynamic kingdom entrepreneur. She's an award-winning author of nine books, sought after in in inspirational speaker. She's a certified Christian life coach and a sold out Jesus girl. Crystal grew up in a poverty. Crystal grew up in poverty and was told that she would amount to nothing or she would not be successful. Can you believe it, guys? What a lie. Crystal became resolute not to settle for mediocrity, but, but instead she uses her story to impact the lives of people globally. After living a life of partying, poverty, promiscuity, and being abused, and having struggles of feeling, of being inadequate, 
Crystal encountered Crystal encountered encountered Jesus Christ amid her brokenness. Since then, she committed to living a life of faith, obedience, and purpose. Now, passionately empowers women to deepen their intimacy with God and discover their identity and to use their message. Crystal Day is the COO of Daylight Publishers, host of the Diary of a Jesus Girl podcast. Woot, woot, way to go, Crystal. And if it is that you haven't checked it out, you should go because it's awesome stuff. She's also the founder of Empowering Girls, of the Empowering Girls Club. Crystal's practical anecdotes, vibrant personality, real life stories, and biblical sites keep her in constant demand as a speaker and mentor. She enjoys traveling, reading, cooking, and of course, spending time with her beautiful daughter, Crystal Lee. Now, guys, may Crystal Day feel welcome. Over to you, Crystal. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello, everyone. Let me know if you're hearing me clearly. <clears throat> Send me some love if you're hearing me clearly. Uh, Kimberly, you're hearing me, right? Just want to ensure we're good to go. All right, all right, all right, good to go. So again, um, it is truly, truly my pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I'm happy to be able to share on this topic of making your mark. And listen, I'm passionate about teens. I'm passionate about young people. I'm just passionate about, you know, just equipping people with the tools that they need to show up and to, yeah, they'll leave a mark to leave that impact. So I want to thank the team here at ID Pioneer for the invitation. I'm truly, truly humbled. Um, you know, I mean, as I was preparing for this, I and and even we have been on trying to come on, you know, we see how the enemy has been trying to, you know, just cause cause a little discouragement with things not falling into place, but um, we are grateful that we are able to come on and to inspire persons. So, Kimberly, I thank you. You know, I love you, love you, boo. So, thank you so much for um the invitation. I see my um uh, other guest, you know, well decked up, Mister Frickleton, right? Looking all handsome, you know. Before he he just looked normal, and now I see him in him jacket, ready to go. So I am excited um to to be here. So let me jump into my presentation. So as um, it has been shared that, you know, I, so I do many, many things. And, you know, one of the things that has been very important to me is having impact. And when I think about from, I was a very young person. I know that I knew that I always wanted to, to do something that will, yeah, that will impact lives. I always wanted to help people. I always knew that I wanted to do something that could cause people to to move them to change. And that's one of the things that led me into coaching, speaking, and authoring. Now, as I prepared about to talk about, you know, how how can I equip young people to make their mark? You know, how can I really share something that one you will remember because the truth is many of you will hear many many speeches and you will hear many things about making your mark but at the end of the day it's not so much about what you you hear is actually what you apply so, so we'll always hear that knowledge, knowledge is power, power but, but over and over, and over I, tell I tell people, people that, that you know, you know I've, I've learned that knowledge is not power right it is not applied knowledge is power because, because so many of us know things but do we act on these things? And that's what is important. So tonight, I really want, you know, I'll share, I'm going to share um, what I think are the three V's of becoming, becoming a person, person, an impactful person, to becoming an a, a, a influencer, you know, somebody that really influences and impacts and leaves a legacy. But before I get into that, you know, as I said, I just want to take you back to just share a share little, a little story. story. So, so I want, I want you, you to imagine... To imagine Growing up, up in a community where you are told that people from your community rarely amount to anything. 
and the ones that do, they re really rarely return. Imagine going to your bed many nights, not knowing what to eat, having nothing to eat, going to school sometimes without lunch money, and sometimes eat really cool because you might not dress like others, you might not be able to afford, you know, the best things. And imagine what that would do to a young person's self-esteem. I want you to also look, imagine, like many of many of us, you know, we have imperfections. So whether you have a lot of acne growing up and persons would tease you and say, hey, you know, um, you are grumbling, you are, you know, I mean, you know, we know that young people can be very harsh, you know, so greater face and all of these things that they would really say about you. Imagine having to hear gunshots every night sleeping on the ground because the truth is you don't know if one day somebody's going to kick down the door or uh, stray shot my fire and yeah you just don't know i want you to imagine just feeling like i have what is my destiny what is it that i really want to accomplish and the truth most times we are taught that we're what in whatever environment that we're in, that's what shape us to and decide our destiny. And for somebody that's listening, they might be able to relate to some of what I just shared. For others, it might be a totally different, you know, environment. You know, you might grow up with Christian parents, you might grow up with people that, you know, believe in you, you excel in school, um, you know you have pretty decent you know life but the thing that i've learned is that it really doesn't matter what your life the environment that you grew up in meaning it's not necessary how you start that determines your destiny is really and truly the choices that you make on the that the destiny that determines your outcome so it doesn't matter if you're listening right now what your past is like and it doesn't matter what your present is like because the truth is some of you might be still struggling financially some of you might still be struggling with you know not showing how you'll probably complete a degree probably some of you tomorrow sunday you might not even know where the dinner is coming from but does that define who you are and is that an indication of who you could when i look at growing up and many other things that i shared a while ago was my reality growing up as the first child of my parents and you know the level of and I, I i say i use poverty in quote because the truth is while we had financial luck we were so rich in love um i mean growing up in inner city you know your parents don't tell you that you love you they don't go they don't get hugs and kisses but they were there and they were there when you needed them there. That's the parents. Um, you know, my siblings and I are very close. So that's for me what was what rich in love. But one of the things I remember is that we had dreams. We had dreams that were beyond our current reality. And even though the truth is, our parents, my parents did not go to um, you know, they didn't, didn't go to university, you know, they were doing security work um my, my dad was a carpenter you know barely surviving it, it would have been easy for us to get lost my brothers and sisters and i get lost in the system but the there was a dream in our heart that we felt that we were able to pursue and it made me have have a i know there's a desire that i wanted to go into politics because I wanted to leave a mark and in that that was the only way I saw that I could leave a mark that was beyond me I didn't want just to like of course you know I wanted to have the nice car the nice house the nice clothes the nice things but there was something within me that felt like there was more to life than just accomplishing things for myself but there is more that I could do to contribute to the society um I also remember just knowing somewhere deep down that 
all of us had such a potential. I mean, there's so many, uh, I remember some of the boys that were, that we grew up with, they are in, you know, they're, they die by the guns or they're in, you know, violence right now. A lot of the young ladies, they choose um, prostitution, you know, and they didn't take their education um, seriously. And, you know, they, their choices led them to a different path. And somewhere in that, I wanted to offer my way of help. No, you're somebody that's listening right now. The fact that you're on tonight, I know that you desire to do more than yourself. How do I know? Because you will not tune in to a video that talks about making a mark if you didn't desire to make a mark. Right now, you could be watching Netflix. You could be doing all different kind of things. But even if you're watching the replay right now, there's something about the title of this live that grabbed your attention. There's something about this title that resonated with your soul so much. And that's why you're on. And I want to share with you three things or three, I would say, characteristics that you need to become a person that can make a mark. Because I can tell you, and when I was thinking about it, I could tell you five steps to do to make a mark or to leave a legacy, five ways that you can leave a legacy. But when I thought about it, the truth is you can only do as much as you become. The becoming aspect of who you are will determine how you make life choices because as i said if i didn't become a person that decide that i was going to dream bigger than my current reality I had to become a dreamer but also become an action taker in order for me to make better choices it wasn't just the things that i have done because you can do the right things but yet still if you are not if you haven't become that person then you will find that when the, the, the struggles of life come, then you will give up on those dreams. So I want to share five, what I say is three V's, right? It could be adjective, it could be, um, but these are things that you need to become in order for you to leave a mark. So the first V I want to share is that you should become a visionary. You must become a visionary. What is a vision? A vision is you seeing something beyond your current reality. You seeing past what you are currently seeing. So it's almost like you're seeing in the invisible, right? Um, and not looking at the visible things. So when my Bible school teacher would always say, the invisible realm is more real than the visible realm. Why? Because Anything that you, man, and we are uh, quote unquote manifest, we might not use the word manifest, but anything that you accomplish in the visible, it was already, you thought about it in the invisible. So the man that invented the cell phone, he had to see it in his imagination before he, would, he was able to act on it. Anything, the, 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 the person that thought about um, Steve Jobs that, um, came up with Apple, he had a vision. He saw something in his imagination that, and then he was able to now pull it down, right? And make it a, 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 make it a reality. Uh, the, the story is told of Walt Disney and when Disney, he was working on the concept of Disneyland for many, many years. And when Disneyland was open, by the time it was open, the Disney um, was open, he died. So he wasn't able to see the physical manifestation of his vision. And when his wife, Miss Disney, Miss Walt, when she, when they said, you know, we wish that he was here to see, you know, the, see it come to life. And his wife said, but he, he saw it already because he saw it in the imagination, that's why he was able to bring it. So as a visionary, as a, if you want to leave a, a mark, if you want to leave a legacy, you have to become a visionary. You have to be willing to do and see beyond what your current reality is. That is why I can stand here, because the truth is my reality says I should have been 
pregnant and by now at 30 having four kids because most of the ladies, the young ladies that I grew up with, that's their current reality. Is it that we were different? No, we had, we were in the same environment, but we had a different I chose to become a different person. I chose to become a visionary. I chose to dream beyond my current reality. Number two V is to become a valant. And when you think about, and, and that, when you be, become a valant, it means to become a brave and courageous person. So if you watch movie, I'm a big movie fan, right? And we think about, um, a lot of the movies, the ancient movies, um, like one of my mo favorite movies, um, Snow White and the Huntsman, right? The, the valiant is the person, the brave soldier, right? Is that soldier, that person um, that is always courageous, right? We talk about, they hear about the story of Robin Hood and how he used to rob the, the, the rich people to, to, to give to the poor, right? So that is the person, a valiant somebody that's brave and courageous, somebody that stand up for something, you have to become a valant. You have to become that person that is willing to stand up against what, stand up for what you believe in. And that is the simple truth. Right now, the society is full, filled with people that are followers. But so many, and so many leaders are just leading people in the wrong direction. If you are not willing to stand up for your values, stand up for what you believe in, stand up for your dreams, despite what happened, then you will not be able to leave your mark. And that is the truth. You, you have to be able to when you think about, you know, even when you, when, when you think about um, many of the persons that really invented many of these things and they tell you, most entrepreneurs will tell you how many times they failed, right? And because they had to not just have the vision, but they had to be willing to be courageous and every time they fail, they bounce back. They had to be that person, that courageous one. If you want to leave your mark, you can't walk as a coward. <laughs> it's on a way, but it's true. You can't be a coward. It takes a lot of bravery to stand for what you believe in. And that might not necessarily mean, because sometimes people see being brave and valiant as being rude, as being obnoxious, as being prideful. That is not what we're saying. What we're saying is that when you need to be willing to stand up for what you believe in, hoping and, and trusting that because you want to leave a positive, because the truth is there are many people that are leaving negative, um, negative um, legacy on the earth. When we think about Adolf Hitler, right? But you know what? It's, it's interesting and it's interesting that, you know, thank you Holy Spirit for bringing that. Because when you think about it, while he did a lot of evil things in his eyes, he was he was killing the Jews because he thought that it was something that good that he was doing. So he was being brave to do something that was harming so many people. And when you think about the people that even crucified Jesus Christ, you could not convince them that they weren't doing something good. When Paul, I mean, when you think about the story of um, Saul turning into Paul and he was executing the Christians, he was standing up for something. He was being brave, but being brave in the wrong, wrong thing. I'm trusting that because you are trying to leave a mark, you are trying to leave a positive, and if you're a Christian, a godly mark. I'm trusting that you are standing up for righteousness and not for lewdness and injustice. So you have to become a valant. The other V that I want to share with you, the final one, is you have to become versatile. You have to become versatile. What do I mean by that? You have to be willing to adjust 
you have to be willing to um one of the things I, I remember a friend saying recently is that you must you must not you must be tied to the 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 goal but you must release the process so for many of you the goal might like, so in her case, she was sharing that she wanted to become a lawyer, but it wasn't coming true. She did her degree in literature and, you know, the, the idea of finally becoming a lawyer wasn't coming to, to, to pass how she wanted to. But she still had the goal of becoming a lawyer. And even though the process took a while and it took, she's finally now finishing her final year in law school in her 30s. No. When you think, I mean, even when I think about many of the dreams that I had, you know, I mean, you couldn't tell me that I would not be rich and famous by I'm 25, <laughs> right? For many of you, if you grew up in church, you think by you reach 21, you, you have your first child, you, you're married and have your first child at 23, and then you, you know, so many of us, we feel like, okay, if it doesn't happen right now, and how I want it to happen, then that's it, and you give up. Being a, being a person that is a legacy builder, a legacy lever, an impact person, it means that you have to be willing to be versatile and there means that you have to adjust the changes. You have to learn to adjust the changes. If you think about it, many businesses were suffered um, last year when COVID hit because many businesses weren't prepared. Many churches weren't prepared to go online. So many churches did not adapt. And that's a part of being versatile. You have to be adaptable, right? You can't have this rigid approach to everything in life because life is, life is, we wish that, you know, if I do, if I do the right thing and I, life happens, you know, I mean, I have friends that, yeah, they, they got sick, you know, whether they in the middle, they, I mean, I remember a sister of mine, she had, um, lupus right young girl diagnosed with lupus no of course life is happening for many of us some of us were there and a loved one died somebody that you know is so close to you and it's so tempting when my sister died like my whole vision for life got blurred <laughs> right i'm being honest it got so my sister which was 21 years old right i mean i could not picture most of my life, I was I was very motivated to become successful for my siblings, right? So I'm the oldest one. I wanted to become successful so that I can be an example for them. So at 21, that was two years ago. She died two years ago. I was not prepared for this. I wasn't. I was tempted to, my vi actually not tempted, my vision got blurred. At any moment, I wanted to stop writing books. I wanted to stop um, speaking. I wanted to, like, I, I just, I just wanted to just sit at church every day. I wasn't going to backslide, but I just wanted to sit at church and just wallow in white life, life unfairness, basically. But I remember being invited to a school and they called me to come and speak. And it so happened that the day that they wanted me to speak was the day after her funeral. And I told them, no, that I'm not accepting any speaking engagement, but I can recommend, you know, I have a lot of coaches, I have a lot of persons um, that I have trained so they can come. And I remember the guidance counselor just insisted that I came because I came highly recommended. So I told her I'll think about it. And she said, you know, I told her that, hey, you know, I have a bit in my family right now. I just can't. And I remember she saying, you know, um, you know, I mean, I understand. But if you if there's one life that you could impact, I'd really love for you to come. And I remember just sitting and thinking about it. And, you know, when I say to my mom, she's like, what would Nayoka, my sister name, what would she want you to do? Would she want you to go? And. I never really, she did, like, in, like my, my, I, I know that it sounds harsh, but my response is like, she did, she can't want it for me, <laughs> you know, because I was just so sad about the situation. But then when I thought about it, I remember that as a 
as a person that decide, desired to leave a mark, I had to be a valiant. I had to be brave even when I can't. And this is how the Holy Spirit, you know, I just prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to empower me. And I went, that was the day after a funeral, and I went, I did a speech, and I mean, the, the girls were just crying. I mean, I just had an amazing time just ministering to the young people at the school, you know? And, you know, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I did not give up. I'm so glad that even though the vision got blurred, I was able to be versatile even when life knocked me down, that I was able to just adjust and to continue. So my encouragement as I close is that so for somebody that's listening, I know our next guest speaker, I know that he's going to come and just pump on up and you know get you guys going. And I know that, you know, God is intentional about what he is allowing you to hear tonight. Become a visionary. Remember that a vision is living beyond you. Yes, have a vision for your family. Have a vision for your career. Have a vision for your, your Christian work if you're a believer. But also I have a vision of how you can leave a legacy beyond you. Become a valant, you know. Um, the, the scripture says, be strong and be of good courage, right? That's what the Lord said to Joshua. Be strong and be of good courage, right? The, the, the scripture in Timothy said, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind, right? You have to be a valant in order for you to leave your mark. And finally, you want to be versatile, right? You want to adapt to the changes. Guess what? COVID hit. I had a, guess what? You had to adjust to coming online. Right now, we would prefer to be in our auditorium or organ, you know, greet people, you know? But we had to put on your clothes, you know, your, when you're deep on Zoom, only your top part of your body look nice and then the rest of you just look, <laughs> you know? And you just adapt to the changes because that's what being a leader, that's what leaving a mark, that's what leaving a legacy looks like. God bless you. Thank you so much, Crystal. Well, if it is that you have not reached anyone, I am here. I, 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 I am one of them who have truly been speaking into my soul because I realize that the Lord is so strategic and sometimes he just flip the script sometimes. Sometimes we actually have something to say and then the Lord just brings something else totally different. And I um, actually heard you made mention of your sister. And to be honest, today I broke down in tears because I recently, recently lost my brother and I just was over it. I didn't really want to do it, but you know, I was saying, this was what my brother is always supporting my dreams and he would love for me to be on this platform. And, uh, you know, that there's just one thing. Um, there's just one thing. I have a question for you. Because many a times we think that, you know, making a mark, sometimes the road will be smooth. And sometimes you will not get little hurdles. You will not be shaken up a little. But I want, seeing that you have already been there before, I want you to just enlighten us a little bit as to how we as young people, how we as visionaries we can you know amidst all the chaos amidst all all the pain that we might be going through how can we still be focused and make our mark regardless of the pain we feel by the loss of a loved one we might lose our jobs how can we just keep that focus and make our mark intentionally what are some coping skills that you would suggest for us as listeners tonight crystal Okay. Um, and condolences again, Kimberly. I'm sending you the biggest hug right now. Um, believe me, I know losing a sibling is definitely not easy. Um, so one of the major things is that we have to be real. The word of God tells us that in this world we would have troubles, but take heed, he has overcome the world. So many of us are convinced that when we become Christian, life become perfect. I don't know how that makes sense because no matter what this life will offer you, if there's anything you're guaranteed to offer, it's stress problem, <laughs> right? So just, just prepare yourself that 
but here's the thing. One, I think you have to own your happiness. You have to choose to recognize that your circumstances is not what going to determine your happiness, right? You can happy, Paul says you can be contented whether you have look alarm a lot, right? So you have to adapt to a place that what my happiness is not dependent of my on the external things, but it depends on who I am and how I choose to show up. Right. So if eating ice, if you're feeling and if eating some ice cream and eating makes you feel better in the hardest moment, then you show up. Right. So own your happiness. Secondly, it is OK to cry. It is OK to even give up. But you are going to give up for 24 hours and then you're going to get up and move, keep moving. Right. So you can't give up, you know, you know, I'll even give you 48 hours. Right, 24, give you 48 hours, but you know you better get up and keep going, right? So it's okay to cry, it's okay um, to understand that, hey, you know, I don't have it together right now. Um, the other thing that I would say is that you must have faith. What faith says is that my current reality will not stay this way forever. Faith says that I will bounce back. Faith says that God has a better plan for me. Faith says that I can move from these things. So you must have faith and nurture that faith. It means that you have to listen to some sermons that remind you of how, and, and people judge like uh, Joel Austin, but it's anytime I'm down, I have to listen to Joel. I tell you, may I confess, because Joel know how to get you to do what you need to do, <laughs> right? I'm telling you, you can do all and him, right? It is what it is. Um. I think you need a community, right? Um, you need a community. You don't need to walk this, don't try to walk this walk by yourself. It's impossible. God did not create you to, so you need to find a community, find an outlet that you're able to, um, to really just release and share with and people to keep you in prayer, people to keep you encouraged on the journey. And the final thing that I would say um, is that it is not about you. One of the major things about leaving a mark is that you have to realize that this life is more than you, right? What the gifts that you have, they, whatever you have is not for you, right? I know that we hear that our gifts will make room for us and present us, um, you know, in front of mine. And we always hear that, you know, our gifts is how we're going to get rich and get our wealth and all of that. But guess what? It is for others. Your gift, your story, all it is for others. So if you keep those things in perspective, um, I guarantee you, there's nothing too hard for you to bounce back from, right? So one, own your happiness. Nobody has the, nobody should have a uh, control over your happiness. Yes, you're in a relationship, you know, the person disappoints you, you, you got a heart, you know, I mean, I was engaged, the engagement got broken off, and yeah, you know, as a woman, you, you bust to cry, you know, you call over your friend, and you drink two wine, and you cuss him off, and then you say, all right, God, we are going to do this all over again. You understand? So own your happiness, it's okay to cry, um, surround yourself with a community, um, have faith that you will bounce back again, and then finally remember it's not about you. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, thank you so much. May the Lord continue to bless you. Um, and of course, guys, you know, please to have your notebook ready to take notes because she left, she actually gave us some very, very important nuggets. Um, as to oh, to, to leave our marks, becoming a visionary, be you know, Avalanche and also to be versatile, guys. Very important tools she has left us with tonight. And we also have another giveaway. Yes, there's a lot of niceness happening tonight. And of course, it's us. The giveaway will be one of Crystal Day's book. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. And it's Living a Royal Reality. You know, and this book, I was actually reading the blurb on it. And it actually speaks to, you know, how it's basically empower women, how it enlighten us, you know, because we are, of course, we are royalty, you know, and basically we have access and we have dominion to, 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 to live.
yours tonight. And I'm going to ask you, um, which, which children home do ID Pioneer Group, you, you can, can tell, tell me at least one, one which children home does ID, ID Pioneer, Pioneer um, Group go into and serve and leave a mark? You know, please, guys, send your answers in. Type it in the chat and we'll identify who the winner is tonight. So I'm waiting for to hear who that winner will be. Or if not, I can just continue and um, announce. Just also to let you know that if it is that you have not yet followed ID Pioneers on Instagram, then you have to go ahead and follow us because this is a prerequisite in order for you to win this wonderful book. And if it is that you're not a winner tonight, feel free. You know, you can go ahead and purchase this wonderful book because it's available on Amazon. All right, guys. Do we have a winner tonight? I think we do have a winner tonight, and it is. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. It's Maisha Pina. Congratulations, Maisha. Congratulations to you. Um, I hope that you will enjoy this book and that it will help you, you know, overcoming your realities. So I'm going to introduce to you our second speaker for tonight. And that's D.I. Razai Freckleton. Please bear with me, please bear with me. And I'm going to share with you a little, a bit, you know, of its background. A powerful, another powerful man who is blazing trails, who is making his mark in every single area in Jamaica. So D.I. Razai is considered to be a motivator. He's from a very, very humble past, you know. He spent the majority of his formative years in the harsh inner city of Maypen in Clarendon, Jamaica. He, however, believes in the development through education and in light of this, he is currently a business owner, innovator, consultant, developer, where he has developed multi-level businesses, both locally and internationally. He is a high school teacher, and mathematics school. So if you're struggling with mathematics, I'm sure there's a cost. You can reach out to him, follow him on Instagram. He's also a youth counselor, mentor, and motivational speaker, musician, and athlete. Wow, what a mouthful. He is the founder of Sponsor Child Foundation and Free to Dream, both of which operates under the umbrella of Young People Advocating Change, YPAC Network an organization he formed in 2013. Mr. Motivator has been advocating on behalf of young people for over a half decade, such that he was recognized and awarded, awarded as Clarendon's most influential youth leader. Other awards he has received includes the Prime Minister's Youth Award for Excellence in 2010 in the category of Youth in Service and Leadership, the Governor General's, I believe, Ambassador. He served as the Global Youth Ambassador for the, Governor, for the Global Volunteer Network. He is the Global Ambassador and Country Director of International Youth Society. He is Jamaica's Ambassador to Opportunities Knock Your Door former national president and chairman of the Police Youth Club Movement of Jamaica. He's also past president of Maypen Police Youth Club, PYC, which he led to become the largest single organized youth club in the island in 2011. He is the immediate past president, leader, and host speaker of Jamaica's National Youth Parliament. See what I tell you about, guys? Powerful. Ambassador 
for the University of the People. Mr. Freckleton also served on the Commonwealth Youth Council as Secretary to the Special Interest Group, as well as CR of the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors Committee. He was recognized on, the Na on National Heroes Day in 2017, where he received the Heroes Day Award in his parish of Clarendon, where he also served as Justice of the Peace. Do we have any documents to sign, guys? He served as the first chairman for Clarendon Youth and Child Protection Committee, past council member of Jamaica Youth Advocacy Network, and was a facilitator of the Gang Redu Reduction and Prevention Education Program. He is a former radio talk show host on Talk Jamaica Radio. He's a track and field commentator, a special assistant in the office of the Prime Minister. Mr. Freckleton currently holds a bachelor's degree in business management, education, psychology, and a master's in business management and project management. He is a dynamic motivational speaker with 10 years experience in the arena of speaking, training, and coaching. He takes great pride in cultivating leaders and champions. His sole desire is to unlock an atmosphere of greatness in the lives of people he connects with on a daily basis. All above all, Mr. Motivator is here to serve. Di Razi, over to you, Mr. Motivator, Mr. Freckleton. I hand this platform over to you tonight. Welcome <laughs> once more. All right, good night and thank you very much, Kimberly. Um, wow, I'm seeing a slide up, that's the last one. All right, so um, thank you very much, Kimberly. Um, also, I must say, you know, <laughs> condolences to you and Crystal um, having lost siblings. I mean, I have some amazing siblings and I don't know how I would feel if I were to lose any of them. And um, to the persons, to the youngsters who would have joined us on YouTube and on Facebook, welcome. Um, <laughs> I heard Crystal said earlier on that I'm going to come and pump you up. Well, um, to God be the glory. I'm not entirely certain how that is going to happen because I'm having a splitting headache. I was telling the team earlier on back then, but it hasn't dissipated. However, God's work must go on. And this evening, for the next maybe 20 minutes or so, I'm going to be speaking with you as frankly as I can on, you know, this, this theme, history in the making. And, you know, there's a little play on the first word there, history, his story, his story, her story, your story in the making. And it is fitting that the, the, the title for this episode is Make Your Mark. And here's how it's get, it gets even more interesting. When I went to God requesting his permission, yes, we do that. He gave me something that I would like to present to you today. And the topic that I want to present to you on is simply... GPS, your success. And we're going to tie it all in. History in the making. Um, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are out there on Facebook. I don't know where you are out there on YouTube. But I know that your life is history in the making. The, whatever you have that God gave you to impart on the world will create history. So that's what I want to talk to you about. And just pray with me that my head doesn't get any, you know, worse than it is. So when we talk about GPS, your success, my friends, um, there's a youngster out there who may be attending high school or university. Um, what do you think I mean when I say GPS, your success? Now, if you're able to see me, well, maybe if you're not, but if you have a cell phone, you're going to pick this up pretty easily. Think about your cell phone that you have. Your cell phone works on this very same premise. Now, let me tell you what I mean by that. In order for you to get from, and for those who have used the GPS, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
in order for you to get from point A to point B that you do not know where the address is, you have a tool that you could use. Now, I'll give you an example. A few years ago, I was invited to speak at Caribbean Maritime. At that time, it was Institute, not University, CMI. And I didn't know where CMI was located. I asked a few friends and they told, they gave me, you know, a, a blanket description in near to the airport. <laughs> so I needed to reach CMI. Didn't know where it was, but I had internet. I had my cell phone. So I had all the tools that I needed. I'm going to tell you how this is important. Because in order for me to get from Mapen to CMI, I had to first put in the GPS. Let me tell you something about you there and your life right now, my friends. In order for you to leave from the point that you are at to the point where you're supposed to go, I want to tell you that it starts first with you. Let me tell you what I mean by that. If I have the cell phone and it, it is loaded with data and I do not give my GPS an address to work with, it will not serve me the way I want it to serve me. Let me tell you how this is important. You first, my friends, you first, you little boy, you little girl, you young man, you young woman, you lady, you gentleman, you first have to do something in order for you to get what you want. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The, the, the word of the Lord, if you read the Bible, it tells us that so many things are ours if we do something. And in the English language, if is an adverbial clause of condition. The Bible says, if my people who are called by name, by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn and seek my faith, all these things, then will I do all of those things like they'll hear from me and stuff like that. But it first starts with you. So if you need to leave from point A, somebody who is listening and you think that you are stuck, let me tell you something. The book that you have have more than one page so you are stuck on one page but that book has a lot of pages all you need to do is give your accountability meter let me tell you what i mean by that the gps works with three things you have to first give it and give, give, give the gps an address to work with then the GPS sends up that information to the overhead satellite, which pings down in real time the instructions to get you to your destination. Let me say this to you, my friends out there who are listening. I believe in an almighty creator. I don't know who you believe in, and that is all right. But when I have something that I want to accomplish, I give it first to my accountability meter. I give it to my GPS. I give it to God. And when I give it to God, he pins down step-by-step -step instructions to get me to my destination. Now, the next slide and the, the, the next point I want to segue into this is that in order for you to use your GPS correctly, and you first need to know this, your future is bought with the choices that you make now. We may think that we are young, but no day that has passed will return. No second that has passed will return. No minute that has lapsed will return, which means that we have to use every available moment to get to our destination, to get closer to making our mark, to get closer to writing history the way we want it to be written. Now, the, the, the second concept is vision and faith. And I'm very happy that Miss Day, who spoke not too long ago, she mentioned vision. She mentioned faith. And I'm telling you how this is important. I have a car. When I go in the morning or in the evening to get to a location and I put my finger on the button, I am expecting the car to respond to me. Let me tell you something. So many of us, so many persons may be listening to me. You have so many amazing ideas up here in your mind because God has been speaking to you in your quiet times, but we have been doubting. The concept of vision and faith is that you must first, and Crystal said it plainly, you know, 
Walt Disney saw Disney World, Disneyland. He saw Disney long before it was manifested. Let me tell you something. You can see yourself as that great pilot, doctor, lawyer, plumber, teacher, taxi driver, business owner, nurse. It doesn't really matter. You can see yourself. That is a vision. Habakkuk 2 tells that we should write the vision, make it plain. Now, I wish I could show you. I have three whiteboards in my house. And what those boards are, they help me to be accountable. I love to write things down because I have so many ideas flowing through my mind that I may think of an idea and I forget it 10 minutes down the road when a new one comes in. But when I have a vision of what I want for my life and when I bring it to my GPS and the GPS pings out the instruction, I write it down. So that's the concept of vision and faith. Not many people will believe in your vision, but that's where faith comes in. Faith means that you have believed it even when no one else believes it. Faith involves discipline. Discipline even when you have not seen anything working out in your favor, my friends. I don't know who you are, but I can tell you this about me. I spent four years of primary school life not going to primary school. We were so poor that poor people called us poor, shuffled between relatives, boxed all over the place, abused, get whole up, beat up, cut up, all of these things. But God had something in store for me. But I had to first do something. I don't know your story, but I know your story is worth telling. And history will not remember your story unless you win. I know you are a winner, but nobody's going to come and give you a gold medal unless you have crossed the finish line first. The good thing about the race that you are running is that you are running that race by yourself. I know sometimes we try to compete with so many others, but the race is with us, ourselves. How can you run a race with yourself and come last? Yes, you can. By focusing on somebody else's lane, you can get disqualified. However, if you focus on your story, if you focus on your lane, I'm pretty certain that victory is almost assured. So if I can do it, when I graduated, the first year of GSAT 1999, I know I'm dating myself, but I went to school pretty early because when my dad came back and took me and I was supposed to go back to grade four and I'm saying that no, because I used the Bible to teach myself how to read. Let me tell somebody something, man. Let me tell somebody something out there. We now have no excuse. You have no excuse to be great. I know the world celebrates the Elon Musk's and the Jeff Bezos's and the the the, 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 the 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 Apple founders and the YouTube founders and all of these people and Larry Page and all these people. But I can tell you something that you don't know about yourself as yet. History is waiting on you to make your mark. Somewhere listening to me, there is a governor general listening to me. There's a prime minister listening to me right now. Maybe two or three prime ministers listening to me right now. There are some great school principals and other leaders of society. There are some people who are going to find the cure for some diseases that we have been befuddling over. But guess what? You have to first have the vision that I can do this. And have the faith to know that it is already done. I mean, we not see it yet, but I am expected to wake up tomorrow morning. I may not. God may have other plans for me, but I am. Ex that is faith. I am expected to go to my bed and wake up tomorrow morning. I am expected that if I get a call to run, come up to the house now, I turn the ignition, the car is supposed to respond. I expect that. I expect when I go to the gas stove and I turn it, it's supposed to light. That's what I expect. That is faith. Let us... Put that into the pot with our dreams and our goals and get them to work, my friends. Look, I don't know who you are, but one thing I know about you, you have greatness in you. And if you have greatness in you, nobody's going to come and manifest your greatness for you. You have all that power already. Crystal said it best. God has given us all a spirit, not of fear, but of power. 
sound mind and the love. And I'm pretty certain that you can do it. Now, the next slide, I, I want us to look at something um, interesting because while we're talking about the concept of vision and the faith, here's what I want you to know. You have the potential to do more than you're currently doing. Let me tell you something, let me tell you what I mean by that, my friends. In my community, I remember I, I went by a restaurant um 2019, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Now I drive a nice sweet looking black BMW, and I call her the black mamba. No, I love when the black mamba is detailed and looking well speak and span. You know, some males, most males don't like when the car is dirty. The house might be dirty, but the car, no, no. So <laughs> I drove the black mamba and I went to the restaurant. And once I was there, two little guys, they were outside and they appeared to be arguing. And I went out to find out because they were walking around my car and they appeared to be arguing. And I asked a question, what's wrong? And one of the little guys said that he's telling his friend that this car can go 180 because he's somebody for him have one like it. The next little guy said, no, this car can go more than 180. It can go 200 because he knows somebody who tell him that this car can go 200. So I turned to the little guy who said it can go 180 and I told him that you are wrong. The next guy started to, you know, little kids started to laugh. So I turned to him, I said, you are wrong too. Because this beast can go 240. And whilst I was there, a pristinely dressed lady, she came out and she chastised me. She was saying that, you know, look how many road accidents and stuff happening and I should be ashamed of myself because um, I should be telling those little guys to drive safely when they're time to drive and not like that. And I felt bad within myself. But whilst I was going home, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And I'm telling somebody here, that you were designed to go more than society told you the speed limit was. Somebody don't catch it yet. Let me tell you something. You were designed to do more than society has been dictating to you. You were designed to achieve more than your friends and your parents and your parents have, have said to you. You were designed to do so much more that if you really give yourself an opportunity, to explore your great gifts, you would surprise yourself and probably even shock yourself. I know the speed limit may say that you should only do, and I have this problem with our education system because we now have children have to split between science or the arts. Now, if I look back in history, when I look at people like the Michelangelo's and the Leonardo da Vinci's and Raphael, those men were both scientists and they were artists. So I don't know who I'm talking to. When I attended high school, I studied only business subjects. When I left high school, I realized that I was more of a science student than a business student and what i did i did some science subjects and then i went over into the science of things let me tell you something society may want to group you into a box but i'm going to tell you do not even think outside the box burn the box and think society wants you to think that you're designed to go 180 or 110 or 120. Let me tell you something. You are not a car. You were created, the highest being that was created. All the other creatures, a word brought them in. Let there be and there was. But God went down into the dirt for you. God went down into the dirt. And 
at your conception, in fact, at the conception of the universe, he already placed some things inside of you. There are some cures that will not be found until you who are listening decide to research and study that particular disease. There are some solutions that the world is searching for that they will not find until you lend your voice to the conversation. There are some problems that exist that are just waiting for you to make your mark. So while we're designed to offer more than, 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 than we're currently at, how do we do that though? You first have to be consistent, my friends. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you have been doing. But one thing I know about you, and I'm telling you right now, that anything, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, none at all. You do not have to um, do anything um, different from anybody else except be consistent. You can all work at the same jobs and you come out on the top because you're consistent. You can all be in the same class in school. And if you are consistent, you will be surprised at what will happen. Be consistent in that you show up because you are to show up. You don't show up because this person is coming or that person is contributing. You show up and you do the task assigned to you. Be persistent. Think about this. If you are at home one day, you are extremely tired. Say you went to work or you went to school and you have been studying all this time and you are very tired. And you decide to, 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 to take some rest. And you are in your room and somebody came to your door and they knock. And they didn't hear anybody and they turned away. You would feel good. Say, yes, man, I can rest. But what if someone came to your door and they started to knock? And you didn't respond because you thought they would go away after about two or three tries. And they are there knocking. And they are there knocking because they are saying, I know that somebody is inside. I heard some shuffling inside. At some point, you are going to get annoyed and say, why what? Going after your goals or your dreams, my friends, will sometimes be like that. Life will knock you down. People who you are counting on will let you down. People will betray you. Jobs that you are, you are counting on may let you go. Industries that we thought would thrive may meet up on a COVID-19 and just have the door shut. But if you are persistent, you will go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Am I going to be enthused about failing? Of course not. But I am going to be enthused about the vision that I have. The vision I have is way up here. And I am not going to allow. Think about a hurdles race, a 400 meter hurdles race. They have 10 hurdles to go over. I have seen persons won the gold medal and they have hit two or three hurdles, sometimes four. I remember when Superman Felix Sanchez won the gold medal, world championships. He hit about six of those hurdles. Did he stop when he hit them? No. He was consistent. Even when he was failing, he was failing forward. I know our society tells us not to fail. That's wrong. You will fail, my friends. I have failed. But failing is not the same thing as failure. So it is okay to be failing forward. Because when you are a failure, that means that you have already come to the conclusion. Means that you stop. And even in our education system, failing has been one of the things that caused us to not succeed as we should. If I put a problem on the whiteboard and it 
took 15 minutes for anybody to get it correctly. The moment somebody got it correctly, everybody started getting it right. Why? Majority of those people are going to copy from those who get it right. When all I really wanted was for you to make the mistake so I can correct it. But did everybody get it right? What encouragement do I have to keep going over the same thing? My friends, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Be like a slingshot. For those who don't know what a slingshot is, in Jamaica, we call it a bingy. The slingshot, how it works, is not like the one that worked in the movie with David. That, 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 that thing where them, no, no, it's not like that one. The ones we have have a, have a Y shape. And you put the rubbers on the two ends. And you put whatever you have in it. But in order for that projectile to go forward, it has to be taken backward. Somebody is afraid of setback. But if you study the top 1% of anything in this life, the Warren Buffetts, the Mark Cubans, the Jeff Bezos, the Elon Musk, the Usain Bolts, the, the, the Elaine Thompson's, you will realize that they all had setbacks. They all had to go back in order to go forward. Mark Zuckerberg failed at his first two businesses before Facebook was found. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You've got to be hungry. It is your vision. Not many people are going to be excited about your vision. And we have a lot of dream killers living around us. But if you are consistent, the top 1%, let me tell you something. Motivation may be less than 1% of what they used to get to the level that they got. What they used was discipline. Be disciplined to be consistent. Be disciplined to be persistent. Be disciplined to be hungry. Discipline means that I am going to do it because it needs to be done. I'm not going to, it's not like I'm doing it because somebody is forcing me. No, I am doing it because it is to be done. I am pretty certain that some persons who are married for many, many years and are in loving relationships, don't always see eye to eye. But the discipline is that I am going to make it work. So that is the third point. The fourth point I want you to remember is connect and detach. In this season of your life, my friends, while we're talking about GPS in our success, you have got to learn to know who to connect to and who to start slip slip there are some people who came with you to this level but can't go any further and sometimes we delay our blessings sometimes we delay going forward because we keep holding on to sandbags and god is saying to you that in this season he wants you to cut the sandbags and allow gas to fill up the gas balloon to bring you forward. I am saying to you that you have to be wise as a serpent, but also be harmless as a dove. I am also going to say to you, my friends, as we as, as, as we speak about this, disconnect from those people whose environment their words their actions and even their thoughts put a damper on your goals increase your fear than decreasing it allow you not to flourish but for your confidence to shrink and then i want you to latch on to those persons who are going to bring you forward let me tell you this Iron sharpens iron. But watch this. Rust attracts rust. What the iron does is that because it keeps rubbing against this next iron, rust has no part to play. Surround yourself with those individuals who are going to propel you forward. 
it was difficult for me, I won't lie. Because I live in a society where I wanted to be a don. That's what I wanted to be. Ghetto, inner city. That's what I wanted to be. But when God started to work on me, start using sandpaper and start scrub off the, 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 the rough patches that were around me, I had to realize that I could not go forward holding on to some of the same individuals who were trying to keep me in that environment. In your class, my friends who are listening going to school, there are some individuals who they are there because maybe they are there because somebody is probably propelling them to be there. They don't have to be there. They will tell you that they don't have to be there because their dad or mom have this business, have wealth or whatever. Distance yourself from some of those individuals. Surround yourself with those people who are going to see the best version of you and you going forward. I don't know you, but I can tell you that your GPS have a log. I don't know the, 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 the entire age of the, 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 the audience that is listening, but I want you to know this. Some time ago, I have a friend that he and his wife, they were separated for a while. And the reason why they reached to that level was he cheated on her. No worries, it's going somewhere. He cheated on her. And if I was interacting with persons, I would probably ask you, how you think she found out that he was cheating? I know you did me all sorts of different things, but I'm going to help you out. He worked at a job that they didn't give any overtime. They never gave overtime. So he came to his wife and he said, oh, honey, we have a new client and they need all the able-bodied individuals on this account. So I'm going to be a little bit absent for a couple of weeks. She didn't think anything of it. So for two weeks, he was hardly at home. Don't worry, you soon get what I'm saying. So one day when he eventually was home, she decided to use the car to go to a boutique because she didn't know, she didn't remember the address, but she remembered that she had put the address in the car's GPS some time ago. And for those who don't know, your GPS have what is called a GPS log. So when she drew up the GPS log, she saw all of these things, um, hotels and uh, movie theaters and restaurants and all of these things. That was how she found out. And ladies who are listening, I'm not teaching you how to catch them and cheat in 101. But what I want to point out to you is this, watch this. If I were to pull up on any one of you, and ask to see your life's GPS. Would I find out that you have been cheating on your goals and your dreams? Would I find out that you have been connecting to environments and individuals that were stealing your goals and your dreams away from you? Let me tell you something. In this amazing and fantastic season of your life, I want you to remember this. That the page that you're standing on now, that you are stuck on, is but one page in that book. I don't know who you are, but I know that you have greatness inside of you. When you have time, I want you to Google Chinese bamboo. Or you can YouTube it, the Chinese bamboo. The Chinese bamboo, my friends, is a plant that is said to be in the Far East, Asia. Now, it is said to be the only plant that can literally be seen growing in front of your eyes. But there is something to it that I want you to know and consider. The Chinese bamboo, when you plant it into the earth, it takes five years before it starts to grow. Five years. 
The thing that makes it grow though is that you have to water that Chinese bamboo every single day for the five years. How many people would be connected to individuals who are seeing you water in the same spot for five years? See nothing manifesting and encourage you. Some people would probably think that you've lost your mind. Think that you got cuckoo. They may think that it's all a ruse or a hoax. But let me tell you something. After that Chinese bamboo pulls up out of the ground after five years, it takes five weeks to become 90 feet tall. The question I would ask any one of you, when did that Chinese bamboo became 90 feet tall? The five years or the five weeks? It's not a trick question. Some people will say it takes five years to become 90 feet tall. Other people will say it will take five weeks. I'm going to say to you, that Chinese bamboo was 90 feet tall in the entire five years. Let me tell you something. You, when you become the doctor and the CEO or whatever it is, if it started with a vision, you already saw it. You already saw it. Your vision is already activated as long as you use faith. Who here will grow so rapidly after them get as Jamaican said them boss. But the key thing to remember is that nothing will happen if you did not water that Chinese bamboo. Nothing will happen if you do not water your dream. Nothing will happen if you do not water your goal. My friends, try to get on top in life because the bottom is overcrowded and history does not remember those who come last. Well, unless you're Shakari Richardson. History don't remember those people who get last place. History will remember you for coming first. You are the star for your movie. Here is the interesting part. You're not only the star, you are the director and the producer. You are the CEO for your life. God is the board, the, 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 the board director. He's the chairman for the board and he gave you the mandate, your life, that job to run. And if you apply vision and faith, I'm pretty certain that we will be reading your story, seeing your story on profile. We'll be seeing you listening now on ID Pioneers next year or the year after five years down the road. Everybody have a story to tell, my friends. But you have to first win. You have the tools to win. Vision, faith. Be consistent. Be persistent. You have greater potential than society may tell you. And just remember this as I, as, as I close. Vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. But when you have vision and through faith you apply action, those are the ingredients for astronomical success. How are you going to, to reach it? Remember this poem. When others are sitting, stand. When others are standing, Stand up. When others are standing up, stand out. When others are standing out, you, my friends, be outstanding. And I can tell you this. I don't know about you, but I believe in you. Even if you don't believe in your goals and your dreams and you think they are too big, I believe in you. Your struggles will only be admired after you become successful. But we at ID Pioneers believe in you. 
I believe in you. Go make your mark and come back and testify because your testimony might be somebody else's roadmap, maybe somebody else's guide for their success. My friends, I'm happy to have shared with you today, not feeling so well, but to God be the glory. I know that you are a success story. And I can't wait for you to become that success that you're designed to be. God bless you. Have an amazing rest of evening, amazing rest of month, amazing rest of year, and all the best as you kick some butt in the year 2022. Yeah, man, we're going to kick out bad mind and jealousy and laziness. We're going to kick out so many things that we had so close to us in 2021. Because you are a history maker. Your history is in the making. Your story is going to be told. So keep writing it. The book has more pages than the one you're on. Blessings. Wow, amazing, amazing. Mr. Motivator, you have heard him. So much awesome nuggets he have actually, you know, in part, you know, pour out with us tonight. I am just, you know, in awe. Thank you so much, Mr. Freckleton. Thank you, thank you so much. I have two questions for you tonight. And one person is basically asking, how then can one expand their vision when the current reality seems to be as good as it gets? I repeat, how then can one expand their vision when the current reality seems to be as good as it gets? All right, thanks for that question. You see, I tell the person who asks this question something. Um, success leaves clues. Success always leaves clues. Let me tell you something. Abraham Lincoln, he lost elections for about eight years. Not just that. He suffered a mental breakdown. He was supposed to be in a mental institution. He went bankrupt. Walt Disney, you heard the story. Michael Jordan did not make his high school basketball team. The thing about those individuals and others who also got those sad stories was that they did not give up. Michael um, Jordan will tell you that after he was cut from his high school basketball team, he started practicing basketball morning, noon, and night. And every day he would shoot at least 1,000 hoops. So the person who believes that the current reality is as good as it gets, look at your own surrounding. Look in Jamaica for argument's sake. Portia Lucretia Simpson Miller became prime minister. She will tell you her story is not one that embellishes anything lovely. Many people probably say that, you know, she wasn't as educated, but she did not allow those realities to stop her. And there's so many stories that could be told. Let me tell you something. When I graduated primary school to go to high school, I was the first person to pass to go to Glenmuir High School, the top high school in Clarendon, and probably one of the best in Jamaica. I know we will stay here tonight and debate it, but one of the best. But I did not reach there because persons believed I could do it. I reached there because I believed that I could do it. When I went to select schools, I remember a teacher told my father that I should be realistic in my choices because I had Glenmuir first choice, Arden second choice, and Kingston College as third choice because I love schools challenge quiz. I was told to be realistic and select a school that... I, I don't put down any school, but that was not in my lane. So society will tell you that the current reality is as good as it gets. 
But let me tell you something. God has already given you all the tools necessary to you right now. The fact that you're hearing this means that you already have an entire university available to you. Why? If you have one of this, a mobile phone, it no matter the brand, as long as you can go on the internet, you can research anything that can propel you and take you out of poverty. Take you out of your current reality. But watch this. It starts first with you. You have to first believe. The GPS have to first start with you. You have to first give the GPS something to work with. So what are you going to research tomorrow? How to do Forex. How to start a business. How to speak better. How to impact lives positively. Watch this. The traditional ways of doing business are going through the door. Believe it, yes or no. I mean, maybe 10 years or so ago, nobody's career was a YouTuber. But now I can tell you, people are making eight and nine figures being a YouTuber, being a podcaster, you know, writing books. You don't even have to do it hardcover books. You can do it as an ebook. There's so many low hanging fruits. You can have a business selling anything from China without owning any of those things. I have a clothing store. I don't make one item in my store. Your current reality is as far as you can see. Expand your vision. And know every free time that some people get, we because of it's what is being pushed to us. It's our entertainment. So it's Netflix and you know all the hot buzz and celebrity this and that. Let us know. Feed our minds with different types of information. And, and I know it's frust frustrating. Because when I didn't know, and people tell you what you don't know can hurt you, lie. What you don't know can hurt you. So expand your mind. Broaden your horizon. So think of 10 things that you want to do. Of those 10 things that you want to do, go and select the top five that you think you want to do. So think of the 10, then of the 10, which five you think is most important. Focus only on those five things. And I don't care the limitations you have. There are avenues around those limitations. Don't tell me you can't go to university because you don't have any money. You can't get student loan. Don't tell me that because guess what? So many institutions are willing to pay you to go and learn. But if we don't broaden our minds to know that the scholarships exist, we can't get it. Trust me. And some people probably don't know. There are free universities out there with degrees that are recognizable worldwide. Go and Google University of the People. Absolutely free. I am one of their ambassadors. I don't study there. I'm one of their ambassadors. But I can tell you absolutely free you're gonna you study anything for free and your degree is recognized in jamaica the united states canada england australia whatever the case may be so let's not dwell on the reality that is in front of us we sometimes love to look only at the plate that is inside that, that is in front of us but if i'm only looking at this plate I am not going to really see what the full table have to offer. Get out of the box, my friends, because you can do it. Next question. Hopefully I answered your question. I think you have, even though it's not necessarily my question, but I think you have answered it. Um, the next question is, how can you define, you know, how is success defined? All right, that's an interesting question because success can be defined in so many ways. And that's one of the things, when I speak to youngsters, I normally caution them about this word success. Because somebody may want to be a successful serial killer. Somebody may want to be a successful con man. Success is the achievement of something that you have set out to do. 
And that's the reason why I said disconnect yourself. Detach yourself from persons and individuals and environments that are going to impose negatives on you. And instead, connect yourself to the positives. Why? Because then, remember, I, I tell you before, I wanted to be a don. That was what was in my ghetto community, my inner city community. But when I saw, I would never have television, but when I start seeing on TV, other young men, and I, I love to call their names like Odell Mulgrave. At that time, he was the youngest sergeant of police in the English-speaking Caribbean. Odell Mulgrave, he was from Clarendon, just like me. Young, young, young man. At the time, he was about 24, 25, maybe 26. Young man. And when I see people like, you know, Mr. Spence and Damian, young and those young men, I started to have a different vision of myself. So success is something that you had a vision of. You plan to do it. If you plan to steal this pen, and you go, that is success. So what are you planning to do? Because when you start talking to yourself, I know people have to talk about, um, you know, it's mad people talking to themselves. That's a lie. A people sense talk to themselves. Mad people go talk to tree and talk to goat. But people with sense talk to themselves. I have about 20 or 30 pairs of shoes. When I need to wear a shoe, I don't go out the road and ask anybody what shoes I should wear. I ask myself. Talk to yourself. Look in the mirror. Ask yourself, what do you really want to become in this life? Don't think about your current situation while you're talking about it. Just, just ask yourself, what do you want to become in this life? The next question you're going to ask yourself is, what mark am I going to leave when I have left this life? The next question you're going to ask yourself is this. Has it ever been done? And the next question you're going to ask yourself is, if it has been done before, are those individuals better than I am? Is it that they have two heads and I have only one? Is it that they had six arms and I only have two? Because watch this. When you realize that great men are just that, men. Great women are just that, women. What separates them from others is that they had a vision and they were determined. They were dedicated. They were disciplined. They applied hard work and they were persistent. And as long as you achieve what was achieved, what you set out to achieve, that is success. Let me tell you something. Last thing. Set your bar high. Go as high as you can go. Yeah. When some people hear your dream, they're probably supposed to say, boy, your dream too big. That's their business. Set your bar so high. That pre-adventure, you don't hit the target. You're still going to be way above everybody else. Way above everybody else's expectation. Because one thing about you talking to yourself, why, why I tell you to do it? When we speak to ourselves, we, in our psychological way, we start to rewrite that negative conversation happening up here. We were all born in sin. We are all prone to be negative than positive. So when you start to speak to yourself every single day, I am going to be an extraordinary multi-billionaire by providing value in the field of this or that. I mean, make your dream be big. Make it be really, really big. So while you're chasing multi-billionaire and you realize that, oh, you reach 55 years old and you're not yet a multi-billionaire, but you're a multi-millionaire, you're still going to be leagues ahead of what some people would have seen. I know I probably use money. It could be anything. It could be anything. Set your bar really high. And nowadays, society's bars are so low that you have a real shot at being history in the making. You have a real shot 
at making your mark be the mark that people use as the gold standard it is no secret that make your mark is written in gold <laughs> let me tell you something young people you have greatness inside of you and you can achieve that success set out to do it get it done Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. I I'm actually feeling like I've attended, you know. I've gone to a conference where I paid my $10,000 or $12,000 to just sit and to be educated, to be empowered. I I feel all filled up. You know, thank you so much, um, Mr. Motivator. Um, I know that you have a very unique name and I don't want to really mess that up. But thank you so much, Mr. Freckleton. I have been blessed. I feel empowered. And thank you so much as well, Crystal. But I have a question to ask you guys, and I hope that you are listening. So um, based on Crystal's presentation, I want you to go ahead and type in the chat um, the three V's um, that Crystal made mention of as to how you can make your mark. What are the three V's? that Crystal made mention of in her presentation as to how can we as young people make our mark. And I think I'll just... So in the interest of time, um, the price that we'll, um, we'll basically be giving you tonight, um, of course, you know that Mr. Freckleton, he's an author as well. He have, I think it's three books, um, Mr. Freckleton. Is it three books that you have? Great. So one of the books um, that you'll be a winner of tonight is called, it's entitled Principles of Super Success. And this book, it basically seeks to look into the minds and give insight um, of the top 5% top, top earners and many successful people. We have so many things in common. So, you know, reading this book, it will help you to see the basic um, habits. It will be as a roadmap in um, how to becoming truly successful and be among those top five, you know, um, earners in Jamaica, in the world, wherever um, you would love to be, make your mark in. So the book, again, I'll tell you the title of the book. It's Principles of Super Success by D.I. Razai Freckleton. And do we have a winner tonight? Okay, but I'll just proceed. Of course, I'll let you know um, the winner soon. Um, again, many, many thanks to our presenters. They have just been tremendous. They have been awesome. And, you know, they have left us with Crystal the three Vs. I will not say it because I don't want to say it and then you cheat the system. Um, but DI also spoke about, you know, you know, vision and faith. You know, you were designed for greater and much more be consistent be persistent you have to be hungry for what you want and of course you know whatever vision whatever dream that you have present it to the gps who is our creator who is god you know and then he will tell us what the instructions for our life is and he also made mention of um you know detaching yourself from those you know those people who will pull you down because of course you know, when you have negativity in your circle, you can't really progress, you know. So you have to separate yourself from among those people and attach yourself to the, connect and attach yourself to the right people. And trust me, tonight was amazing. And if it is that you you are feeling empowered, I want you to just go ahead, send some fire emoji in the chat and to just let us know that you were blessed by this session tonight. And of course, I'm going to ask you to just go ahead and follow them, the presenters, um, Mr. Freckleton, um IG handle is at dr underscore Freckleton. So you can go on Instagram and type, type in dr, which is like Dr. underscore Freckleton, 
And for Crystal, you can go ahead and type in at Crystal Day. So it's C R Y S T A L S D A Y E, Crystal Day. Again, thank you. Thank you so much, our returning viewers. If you are a viewer that you have been consistent, you have been present with us throughout the All Five series, I just want to thank you for joining with us. I want to thank you for our first time viewers as well. Thank you to our presenters. Thank you, my ID Pioneers family. You know, it was such an awesome night tonight. And of course, we're using the tools that, you know, they have shared with us tonight to actually make our mark. You know, tomorrow will not be the same because we are using what we got to make a difference. Tomorrow will totally look different. We're starting out and we're setting it right. And um, I want you to all look forward. 2022 is right around the corner. And our team for next year is chosen generation. Are you a chosen generation? I know I am. So, you know, keep that in mind. So we'll be having our next series of episodes which will be in 2022, and our team will be chosen generation. So see you soon. Save the date and stuff like that. You'll hear more from us. And if it is that you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, I'm going to ask you to just pop over, subscribe to ID Pioneers YouTube channel. If it is that you have not yet followed us on Instagram, go ahead and follow us. Yes, yes, yes. If it is that you have not liked us as yet on Facebook, go ahead and like us. Um, if it is that you'd love to be a volunteer, we do have our, you know, we have our website and that is at www.idpioneers.org.org. So go ahead, guys. There's a lot of information there. You can learn more about us. And if it is that you want to volunteer, you have to be 16 and over. So bear that in mind as well. And if it is that you love what we're you love what we're doing, you want to part, you want to donate, you want to sow a seed, we are welcoming it. We are not turning it down because trust me, we need the money to progress. So of course you can go ahead and donate, go ahead and sponsor. And again, a big thank you to everyone. Tonight was just super awesome, super epic. I feel like something has been a seed has been deposited, placed in my life tonight, and I'm just, you know, in awe. Thank you, thank you once again. Um, I'm just checking to see if we do have a winner. Um, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. Do we have a winner? So our winner, congratulations to Abigail. Mate, congratulations, Abby. I know that you will actually enjoy reading this book and that your life will be transformed. You'll have a new mindset. So let us just pray. I'll be closing you guys out tonight. Father, we just want to thank you once more that you have you've actually showed up in such an awesome and mighty way. And Amidst the, the chaos, amidst everything, Lord God, you have brought us through to the end of the fifth and final episode. We just want to thank you for our presenters who have availed themselves to be used by you. We thank you, Lord God, that you have filled them up in such an awesome way, Lord God, so that they could have poured out, mighty God, poured out words of truth, poured out words of knowledge, Lord God. We thank you for these, Lord God, and we are running with it tonight, Lord God. We are presenting back everything to you, Lord God, for you know the plans and you know the purpose for our lives, Lord. Father God, I just want to thank you for each and every listener tonight. I thank you for each and every viewer. I thank you for each and every participant, Lord God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that as mighty God, they have heard, mighty God, these truths, Lord God. I pray that their lives will not be the same, Lord God. And I pray that they will make their mark, mighty God, that they will not be afraid, Lord God, that they'll be hungry, that they'll be consistent, that they'll go after, mighty God, the dreams that you have laid inside of their hearts. We just want to thank you once more for all that you have done. We just want to thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you have done and for all that you are about to do in our lives, Lord God. For we are indeed a chosen generation and you are about to do exploits in our lives, Lord God. Go with us, Lord God, even right now and cause us to meditate upon your words. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen and amen. So bye, guys, and see you next year. 
see you next year. Thank you so much for joining us once more.